deliver the doses that we do have. The current president's administration is silent. The incoming president is promising change. Because the health of the nation is literally at stake. Tonight, the governor comes out swinging as our state falls short of its vaccination goal. State leaders are angry, shocked tonight, learning today that the Trump administration leaves power with no stockpile of vaccines. We were told there were millions of extra doses just waiting to be released. There were not. Denver 7's Jessica Porter is joining us tonight. And Jessica, we rarely hear the governor call someone a liar, and he did today. Governor Polis was angry as he spoke today and flat out said he was lied to by the White House. The reality is our current supply isn't going to increase anytime soon, and that is going to affect the timeline for who gets vaccinated next. Today, I, I come before you extremely disappointed. Uh, that we were lied to. Polis was promised an additional 210,000 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine next week. He planned to vaccinate half of those Coloradans aged 70 and older with the additional supply. But today, he got the truth. And we were ready to deploy it right away. And now we know that it simply doesn't exist. The governor says he was promised the additional doses just three days ago on a call with Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary of Health Alex Azar, and other governors. But today we're learning there is no national stockpile save to give Americans their second dose, dashing hopes of ramping up vaccine distribution and raising questions about the motivation behind the deception. I'm not going to attribute a motive of vengeance. I, I'm, I'm going to say gross incompetence, but uh, uh, you know, I could I could err on the side of my optimistic view of human nature. Colorado will continue to receive about 70,000 vaccines a week. That could increase if Johnson & Johnson's single-dose vaccine is approved. At this pace, it will take about seven weeks to vaccinate all Coloradans 70 and older. The more doses that we get sooner, the sooner we can start 65 and up, the sooner we can start teachers and bus drivers and others that work on the front lines. I'll leave you with the good news. The governor says we have completed vaccinating most frontline health care workers in Group 1A. Even with no extra doses, he believes Colorado is still on pace to reach its goal of vaccinating 70% of those 70 and older by the end of February. Reporting live, Jessica Porter, Denver 7. All right, Jess, thank you. President-elect Joe Biden said today he wants to get 100 million people vaccinated by the end of his first 100 days in office. Uh, he faces an uphill battle. About 11 million have been vaccinated so far, and he is calling for expanded vaccinations at pharmacies like Walgreens and CVS. He also wants to launch mobile vaccination clinics so that people in the poorest communities can get access. This is a time to set big goals, to pursue them with courage. Let me be clear. I'm convinced we can get it done. Colorado's rollout, while slow, is going well compared to the situation in some other parts of the country. In Houston today, 2,600 appointments were booked in just 16 minutes. In Fresno, California, the line to get a vaccine was two miles long. Well, so far, 48,000 people in Colorado have received both doses of the vaccine. That's less than 1% of the population. Nearly 300,000 doses have been given out altogether. And we know several hundred doses of the vaccine have gone bad while just sitting in a Colorado hospital refrigerator. And today we asked the governor what's going on here and whether it's going to happen again. Uh, there's only been two incidences of waste in Colorado that I'm aware of. Uh, both uh, were, were freak incidents that I, I don't represent a pattern of poor stewardship. There will be power outages. What's important is that folks identify quickly, use all the doses they can. The state won't be putting in any new requirements for these facilities. However, the state can stop sending the vaccine to any facility with a pattern of storage problems. And the vaccine situation, as you see, is just evolving every day. And we can't get to all your questions on the air. So we've put together a pretty good page, I think, with answers to most of your vaccination questions. So look for that right now on the DenverChannel.com. High wind and blowing dust on the Eastern Plains closed I-70 from Denver out to the Kansas border this afternoon. Look at that. The interstate just reopened in the last couple of hours. The poor visibility caused several cars to crash. We know at least one person was killed. And a trooper told us they were running out of ambulances to get people to the hospital. And deputies were driving people with minor injuries to the hospital in their cars. Well, let's bring in Stacy Donaldson, who's tracking the high wind warnings in that part of Colorado for us. So hopefully this is dying down, Stacy. 
It absolutely is. As we speak, uh, we have the high wind warning that's been lifted just now. Also, the dust storm warning that we had most of the afternoon has also been lifted. And you can see here that the winds are dying down across eastern Colorado. They were around 40 to 50 miles an hour for much of the day, but we topped out at 72 mile an hour winds in Lyman, 67 in Burlington, which is why we had that dust storm across the plains. Now, good news tonight. Those winds are dying down. We have expired out all of the watches and warnings across Across the eastern portion of the state a few high clouds passing through and things will become a little more stable as we head in through tonight going into tomorrow though we have a chance for a few scattered snow showers up in the higher elevations that will show up early tomorrow morning coming up a little bit later we'll talk more about whether or not we'll see snow here for the front range in the eastern plains in just a few minutes all right stacy thank you a major reversal from jeffco schools the district announced this afternoon that middle and high school students will move to a hybrid learning model on January 25th, that is one week from Monday. Originally, the district said students would be remote through the end of January. A remote option, though, is still available. There are five days left in the Trump presidency. And protests are scheduled in Denver on most of them, including calls for an armed protest Sunday at our state capitol. The governor said today he's working with Denver police and other law enforcement to make sure everybody is prepared and safe. And late this afternoon, the city of Denver announced it's going to close most city buildings Wednesday and Thursday. Those same buildings will close at 2 p.m. Tuesday and Friday. In D.C., agencies aren't just preparing for inauguration protests. They're also reviewing the steps they took before last week's Insurrection. That includes concerns about tours that took place the day before that angry mob stormed the Capitol. Elizabeth Schulze has the latest. In the nation's capital, now fortified by thousands of National Guard members, new concerns about security threats. There's a great deal of very concerning chatter, and it's what you don't know that we are preparing for. ABC News has obtained an assessment by federal authorities and several local law enforcement agencies claiming domestic violent extremists pose the most likely threat to President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. And a new FBI bulletin obtained by ABC News warns of possible substantial danger from explosive devices during upcoming protests. We have a special responsibility that there is a peaceful transition of power in our country. The FBI has now arrested more than 100 suspects linked to the Capitol mob last week, and hundreds more are under investigation. In a federal court in Arizona, prosecutors making alarming new claims about Jacob Chansley, the self-described QAnon shaman seen wearing horns at the Capitol. Chansley's lawyer telling CNN his client was following President Trump's orders. He felt like he was answering the call of our president. The Department of Justice Inspector General and several other departments are now reviewing their agency's actions in the days leading up to and the day of the attack. The Capitol Police now confirms it's investigating what some lawmakers call an extremely high number of outside groups who were given tours inside the Capitol just one day before the insurrection. And House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has announced retired Lieutenant General Russell Honore, who helped coordinate military relief after Hurricane Katrina, will lead a review of the Capitol's security. And sources tell ABC News President Trump will depart Washington the morning of January 20th, just hours before President-elect Joe Biden takes the oath of office. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Police are investigating Broncos player Von Miller. Hear what the team is saying next. Plus, we'll show you how to file your taxes for free. And one of the most vocal critics of Colorado-based Dominion voting systems makes a shocking about-face and apology. 